This is Hartfield Isle. According to the local Chamber of Commerce, Hartfield's population is 6,782, with prospects. The official census shows that this is only a slight exaggeration. A lot of Hartfield's young men are away in the Army and Navy, and the post office is rapidly becoming the most popular spot in town. Or it would be if it weren't for marshes. Marshes. That sign means a lot more than drugs for sale. For three generations, Hartfield folks have been welcome to go inside and talk and smoke and stay as long as they like. Got everything today from vitamin pills and a banana split with maraschino cherries to a generous supply of Hartfield gossip. Hey, Mr. Bowden. Yes, Larkin. Anything new from Rusty? Anything in run as a story? No, nothing since that uh, last letter you read. That was three weeks ago. Mr. Marsh, Rusty been in any battles yet? The only fighting he mentioned has been with mosquitoes. Seems to be doing plenty of that. Hey, Lou. You're all on the corn plasters. They're on the second shelf in the middle section. The best looking berry vine I have yet made, Lou. Mm. Can you use two bottles? Oh, I should say I can. And now, what are you going to have? All this the same. Old Dr. Tom's trusty tonic. Why don't you try some vitamins? They'd be a lot better for you. Vitamins. All this I hear about vitamins, vitamins, nine. Oh, Dr. Tom's trusty tonic, yeah. I think people should be more careful what they put on their insides. Oh, flu. Oh, Dr. Tom's trusty tonic is good medicine. Good, yeah. There you are, Mrs. Schneider. Mm. A little cockeyed, eh, Grip? The uh, Oldenberry wine never did that to you when you were alive. Ah, oh, there's nothing for you, you old button. Expecting. Oh, somebody young and handsome and dangerous. That can only be one guy. Mm-hmm. Any mail? Oh, nothing from Rusty. He's busy. He has lots of things to do besides writing letters. Yes, I suppose he has. Put the soap in with the other things you're sending him, will you? Candy likes unscented. Yeah. I ordered a special. Oh, Mrs. Schneider. I suppose I'd better lock them up. Guy can't even get a little bun on his own house. Well, just for that. Do I have to go through that again? Oh, no, not that bad. In fact, I'm pretty good. Too good for meatballs and scalloped potatoes? Mr. Marsh. A sunny smile endeared him to all who knew him. To his parents, Lou and Agnes Marsh, we extend our deepest sympathy. May the thought that Rusty gave his life so that others might live and be free bring them some measure of comfort. 
Hartfield is proud of Rusty Marsh. We're going to miss him. May I be of service to you, sir? Where is Lou? I got a prescription. Oh, I'll be glad to take care of it. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather have Lou. Hello, Mr. Hibbs. Mr. Marsh isn't here. He uh, hasn't been down lately. Oh, yeah. Taking it kind of hard, ain't he? But you can rely on Mr. Clayton. He's a very experienced pharmacist from Des Moines. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Clayton. Oh, yes. Doesn't seem natural without a marsh in that booth. I was sure Lou would be down by now. He only came that once. Every time anybody said anything, well, he just couldn't stand it. I wish there was something I could do. But I'm only a doctor. Oh, Reverend. Hello, Agnes. So kind of you to come. How are you feeling, my dear? Well, I'm all right. Blue. Do you think you might let me talk to him today? I don't know. If you only would, I, I know it would help. He's out back. He spends most of his time out there. Maybe I'll have better luck this time. Nice and comfortable out here, Lou. Lou. I've been your minister and your friend for a good many years. And I can't just sit by and watch this happening to you. This, this bitterness. I'm no longer a young man. And if there's one thing I've learned, the thing we must all learn, is that suffering and pain are part of life too. We must accept them. I don't know what you're talking about. It's no use. Words aren't going to bring Rusty back. He's never coming back. Rusty died a fine death, Lou. He died for his country. What was Rusty's country? What did he know about it? What did he know about life? He never had a chance to live. He never went any place. Just a youngster living at home. Going to school. Working for his dad. He never owned his own home. He never had a boy of his own to worry about. Or make a scooter for. It isn't right. It isn't fair. Our fathers in their pilgrimage walked by thy guidance and rested on thy compassion. Still to us, their children, be thou our strength and let thy pity revive our fainting hearts. To those among us whose dear ones are being struck down in far off lands, bring thy peace and thy understanding. Envelop them with thy love, which knows no ending. Amen.
Hello? Cramp. Yep. It's me. But it can't be. You died just after Rusty was born. That's right. 21 years ago. But... But people don't come back. You folks down here have a lot of peculiar set ideas. I've been hanging around, Lou. Hoping maybe you could work this out by yourself. But you've been grieving so long and so hard that I just couldn't stand it. So I told the authorities I'd like to do something about it. They finally gave me permission. But... But things like this just don't happen. It's impossible. I know. You're not there at all. This is all in my mind. Come on, Lou. Let's take a little stroll. No. No. situated. Well, I see Cecil Weeks put up a new fence. Looks a lot better than when the old lady lived there. Agnes is still mighty good looking. Lots of character. He spoke, too. I always liked her. Please, Grant. Why don't, why don't you go? Agnes will be frightened. Look, Lou, aren't they lovely? From Aunt Sally Ross. She raised them from the bulbs we gave her. You see how it is? They can't help you out. You might as well come along. I told you I didn't want to. You'd better go, Grant. Well, I can be as pig-headed as you. I've got all the time in the world. All eternity. Turns down safe as a Mars. Say, did the old lady ever pay you for that bottle of perfume she busted? Ed paid for it after she died. That's the new engine house. A WPA job. It's awful plain looking. I don't like it. I didn't know there was a parade in town. Of course, there's no parade today. But there was one about 25 years ago. Remember? Come on. I'm going to show you a thing or two. Well, well. If it isn't the local militia company coming back from licking the Kaiser. There's Bill Peachy. And Sam Kendall. And if it isn't Corporal Lou Marsh himself. Looked pretty snappy, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so. There's the G.A.R. forming a guard of welcome or something. And there's me, 
I didn't have time to put on the G.A.R. coat that old hen Matty Dyer was trying to make up her mind about a sponge. swells with pride on this momentous occasion as we are gathered here to welcome to our hearts and homes those conquering heroes that not no. so many months... Sure glad to see you. The world is more like a son than a grandson. See, and I was both mother and father to you since you were about three feet high. I knew you were looking for someone you've been dreaming about ever since you left... I could have told you, but before I had a chance, you let out for West Walnut Street. Yes? Uh, where's Velma? She's here. Who wants to know? Well, I want to know. Tell her Lou Marsh is here. Well, Velma's tied up. What? Well, uh, tied up? Well, tied up, that's what I said. Tied up to me. The Marines have landed and have the situation well in hand. But, uh, but, uh, oh, forget it. Glad your bag's safe. I'm Andy Jacobson from up in Mason City where Velma used to live. Velma and I were married last month. I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, no. Not at all. Hello, Lou. I, uh, I hope you both be, uh, be very happy. You're not going to work just yet. You seem to be pretty busy. I've got a surprise for you. Yeah? I just had one. This one you like. Oh, gee, Grant. Cast your eye on that silver plate. Is a pip, thanks, Grant. Well, that must have cost you plenty. No, oh, I traded in your old one. Mr. March. That old wasp. Sunday. Well, I'm afraid I, I don't... Say, Grant, uh, what is this dope Sunday? Oh, just something Agnes and I concocted. This is my grandson, Lou. I might have mentioned him once or twice. This is Agnes Dickens. I need to hear about a year ago. Her father bought the Martin Lumberyard. Agnes and I are pretty thick. Lou's kind of got out of the swing of things. Tell him how to put our masterpiece together, Agnes. Mr. Marsh. Keep your shirt on, Matty. I'll be right with you. Well, it starts out just like an ordinary Sunday. Vanilla ice cream. And then you put some of that peanut butter sauce on top. And then some marshmallow. And then, then sprinkle some of those chopped peanuts over it. And a little dab of whipped cream. Fence has done a lot more for the community than keep out the cows. Thank you. Would you hold? 
Thank you. Careful now, Bill. Don't fall in. That's where you and Agnes were married, Lou. Remember? Yes. I remember you got to sneezing when I walked down the aisle. Because those darn chrysanthemums always did stir up my hay fever. Well, that was a happy year for all of us. Father's been acting like that ever since this sort of thing started. Agnes was having a pretty hard time. So was I. I was our unexpected great grandfather. Oh, hello. Is that you, Lou? Oh, hello, Mrs. Billings. Sorry to hear Walter so bad. Well, don't you fret. I'll hustle right down to the store and put it up for you. Yes, ma'am. Right away. I never used to think anything of getting wet, but that was a mean rain. I was 74. I knew I didn't have a chance. Matter of fact, Doc Purdy only gave me four hours, but I told him he was talking through his hat. I had made up my mind I was going to see my great-grandson before I left. Mighty red of face, isn't he? Reddish hair, too. Hello, Rusty. Headstone of mine's a fine-looking piece of granite. Must have set you back considerable. Rusty, bring Mom another bunch of flowers from the basket. Will you have a flag, Pop? Like your Pop and a Grandpa when you get tired? Sure, you bet I will, Rusty. I'll have a dandy. Want one. Well, there's no telling. By that time, you may have one. Now, Lou, don't tell him such things. No, honey, you're never going to have a flag. There aren't going to be any more wars. While any of us is alive. I remember how Agnes said that no more war. She was right. It's the way to bring up American kids. Not to be thinking about conquests and battles, but to learn to enjoy the homely, simple things that are right here. All around him. You know, Lou, that's one thing God intended in America forever. Kids have got to play Indian. Bows and arrows, war clubs, Daniel Boone, sit and bull. Nobody must be allowed to make them stop. Where are you? Answer me. Me, no rusty woman. Me, big chief. Uh. Me squaw. You come with squaw to wigwam, maybe lie on blanket. Big chief not want to lie on blanket. Great white father, send for you. So long, guys. I got to go to bed. Uh, uh, uh. Just think my big boy's going to school tomorrow for the first time. I don't know whether I'll have time. Me and Peter are going hunting. Oh, kindergarten's a lot of fun. You you draw pictures and play games and you're gonna like it. I hope Pete will like it. Sit down. Good night, darling. Come on. Now, don't you go chasing around tonight, Pete. We're starting kindergarten tomorrow. I won't, I won't, I won't. 
rest, you must obey me. I won't go without Pete. You're mean. I don't like you. I've tried to reason with him, but it doesn't have the slightest effect. Let go of that dog and go with your mother. No. Now look, Rusty. Nobody is allowed to take a dog to school, and you're no exception. Now you're either going to school without Pete, or you're going to get a spanking. Now what'll it be? I'm not going without Pete. Young man, get in that room. First day I started, I had my bottom basted with a hickory stick for upsetting the water bucket. These are all yours, Rusty. You can make a bunny out of this nice blue paper, or you can draw a ship, or build a house. You can do anything you like. Miss Margie! Have you got a stomachache? You look like you had one. I'm Jackie. I'm his brother, Todd. We just started here today, too. I could throw my thumb out of joint. Oh, that's nothing. Look. Passenger. Well, that takes a bit of fingering. Yes, it does. Uh, let's try it again, Lou. <clears throat> no, no, no. When you come to the E flat, don't hit your side key. Use the second and fourth. Now then, play it again. Mm -hmm. There you are. Well, much obliged, Father. <laughs> Well, say, I, I didn't know that you... Oh, were... I used to play a little in college. That's a good look and read. Yes, it is, isn't it? Well, let me see. <clears throat> yeah. Why don't you uh, bring your friends right up here to the counter? We'll see what we can do. Now, what'll it be, boys? Uh, strawberry, raspberry, chocolate, peach? We'll take strawberry. They'll take that first. You ought to see the way those kids shoveled in that ice cream. No wonder they were half starved. Seems the father didn't have a job. And another baby brother had just arrived. Here. Here, thanks. You know, bacon, flour, eggs, stuff like that. Yeah, and that uh, Agnes, uh, you better get over there this afternoon. All right, bye, dear. Oh, what's that for Jackie and Todd? Those eggs and things you were talking to Mama about? Yes. 
You know, Rusty, when you run across a fellow that hasn't got anything, and you've got things, why, you just give him some of your things. Some folks call that charity. I don't like that word. All it is is just being friendly. Can I help? Doing what? Just help you, Dan. I mean, being friendly with you. You have to work pretty hard. And I sort of like to help you. Oh, my. Well, if you want to help me, you just grab that broom... Let's sweep this room out, hmm? 25 cents a week. That was his pay. A little under the union scale, wasn't it? Oh, my. Raised him a dime now and then. He was a lot of help, too. Especially as he got bigger. Shut up like a stalk of corn, didn't he? Sure did. Never sick, either. Oh, mumps, chicken pox, measles, but nothing to worry about. On my honor... On my honor, I will do my best. I will do my best. To do my duty to God and my country. To do my duty to God and my country. And to obey the scout law. And to obey the scout law. To help other people at all times. To help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally You are now entitled to wear the uniform of the Boy Scouts of America. Didn't you notice them, Pop? All the old Scouts had them on. It's not a required thing. I mean, you don't have to have an axe. But they sure swell. And a little other case that fits on your belt. I'm sure gonna buy myself one. It's gonna be kind of hard to do out of your new salary, isn't it? Yeah. But I can do it. Time the end, I used to watch him getting down that can to count over the nickels and dimes and pennies to see how close he was to that 285. Only 38 cents to go, and I'll have an axe in time for the big hike Saturday. It's going to be an overnight hike. I'll need it to cut firewood. Mm, I should say you would. You going to be here for a little while, Rusty? Sure, I don't have to leave for another 10 minutes. That's fine. I've got to go to the post office and register this. There's a uh, man coming in for this prescription. His name is Watson. I don't know him, so be sure you get the cash. The amount's written on there. Yes, sir? There's a prescription here for me. Name, please? Watson, sonny. Sam Watson. It's for my wife. That's right, S. Watson. That'll be two dollars and a quarter, Mr. Watson. Sonny, I wonder could I speak to the manager? I'm sorry. My father isn't in now, Mr. Watson. He told me to take care of it. Sonny, I ain't got but 35 cents. That's all I got to my name. But he said I was to get cash. Mrs. Watson's needing that medicine pretty bad. She's having quite a bit of pain. Do you think your father would mind maybe trusting me for the other dollar ninety? Well, I don't know. I'll get some work maybe next week and... I guess it'll be all right with the manager. God bless you, Sonny.
Saw a lot of good times with Rusty. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, very You will all stand on forever. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. Those growing up years are pretty hard to beat. state me. He knew he didn't have a chance now, but he kept right on doing his darndest. I was sure proud of him. He was a good loser. Yes, he was a good boy. especially religious, was he? Well, he didn't grow up to be a missionary, but he used to attend the young people's meetings on Sunday evenings. For a very good reason, too. You got your debate notes ready? You know, we ought to get together on our rebuttal. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Everett. Why don't we do it tonight? Well, yes, I suppose we could. May I see you home? Why, of course, Everett. I'd be delighted. Hello, Rusty. Hi, Lenore. How do? It's, uh, it's a nice evening. Very nice. It uh, doesn't look like rain, either. No, it doesn't. You know, we, we always have quite a lot of nice weather here. I hope so. Our, uh, are, are you going to live here, Miss... Uh... Oh, oh, pardon me. I, I'm Rusty Marsh. I'm Gretchen Berry. Gretchen Berry. Uh-huh. Uh, would you... Uh, can I... I mean, may I walk home with you, Miss Berry? It's going to be awfully nice. Rusty. <laughs> Thanks. I guess it's come. That moment that only comes when you're 18. When you go stepping along a common everyday sidewalk and think you're walking on the clouds. Yes, he had a bed.
Hello, Rusty. Hi, Pop. Good time, dear. Oh, swell. Wonderful. Marvelous. Well, good night, Mom. Dad. Yeah, good night, Rusty. Looks like it's getting serious. Afraid so. She looks pretty sophisticated for Rusty. Yeah, for me too. That little lady with a bag of tricks could take him for an awful ride. Of course, we don't dare say anything. <laughs> Not if we want to stay on speaking terms with him. <laughs> you sure look goofy. Did you ever get a look at yourself when you were wooing me? I didn't have a chance. I was hooked. Same old fence. Still doing its stuff. with your discharge papers. I'll, I'll see you later. i got to take Gretchen off. Congratulations. Thanks, Bill. I just looked up at him and said, What do you mean, pension? Ain't I been night watchman here for 20 years? Any burglars get past me yet? Ben, you should have been up on that platform tonight. Well, Rusty, you're all set now to go out and fly off the world. That's right, Ben. Gonna close up pretty soon, Pop? Yeah, any time now. Gee, those were nice exercises tonight, Rusty. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Martin. Good night, Ben. What's, uh, what's the idea? No, I just thought I'd open these bath salts while you're getting ready to close up. I can wait. I want to make a big display of them early tomorrow for Saturday's trade. Rusty, uh, did anything go wrong tonight? Oh, just Gretchen. What happened? Just about Sunday. I had a date with her for Sunday afternoon. I thought we'd go to Briggs Woods. But there's a guy who works for her father, salesman or something. A fellow about 24 named Ted Brown. Yes, I know him. He trades here every now and then. He's got a sweet car. Buick convertible. He wanted to take her all the way down to Des Moines. Have supper and go to a movie or something. Well, your mother and I aren't going to use the Ford. I want to take that and go to Des Moines. No. Didn't I tell you? We were planning a picnic. Well, if that's the way she feels about it, she can darn well go to Des Moines. She can darn well keep on going with Ted Brown, too, for all I care. Well, Pop, looks like this axe is going to have to have a new handle. 
Remember the night you gave it to him? I sure do. It seemed like all of a sudden he wasn't a boy any longer. He was a man. And I was mighty proud of him. I think he knew it too. And was just as proud. Yes, I believe he was. Funny thing, though, that all of a sudden maturity didn't interfere with these Sunday picnics. Water bottle. Have a good time, Rusty. Hi, Nora. Hey, Hi. 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 Hey, where are you going? Oh, well, I wish I could... He never had much trouble finding a pretty girl, but he wasn't especially interested in any one of them. Not until that day Agnes went to visit her folks in Omaha. Don't forget to shut the icebox door tight. And be sure the gas is off in the oven. Well, don't feed Biff to death. I suppose I'll find everything in a mess when I get back. Now, we won't be home much. We're going on a bat. Yeah, we might use the old shack to throw a couple of wild parties. <laughs> well, try not to bust up all your best china. Just you dare. <laughs> Bye, Have a good time. Hurry back. I'm at mission. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. Oh, Don't talk to any strange men now. Look out, dear. Hi, Lindell. How nice you look. Well, thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Hello. Hello, Lenora. Don't stay up too late. Don't drive too fast. No. Bye. Bye, dear. Oh, boy. Bye, Mom. Give you a lift, Lenore? Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Marsh. Father's coming to pick me up. Hi, Rusty. Oh, hi. Hello, Peter. Lenore. Well, cool me off. What have you been doing? Where have you been all summer? Chicago, visiting my Aunt Peggy. Is she a miracle woman? No, she's in the advertising business. Yoo-hoo! Father! Excuse me, please. You drop me off at my house. Can you imagine anybody changing like that? Oh, I don't know. Pretty dress. Cute hat. A few new ideas she picked up in Chicago. <laughs> All right, Peggy was quite a girl. But I... I think it's the same old Lenore. Same old pain in the neck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, is there anything wrong with me? No, Rusty. Oh, I don't get it. Well, let's just say it was the way I was brought up, huh? That isn't the real reason. No, Rusty. That isn't the real reason. You want me to carry you? <laughs> no, thanks. I can make it. Okay. These marsh guys don't treat you right, will you? I'll be over. Hey, where are you going, Mom? Oh, no, no. You yeah. sit down over here. I'll make it. And that you've ruined my new percolator, I should say. Oh, so that's the way you want it, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it easy, dream girl. We interrupt the program of dance music for a late bulletin. A communique from the German High Command announces that the German Air Force now has complete control of the air over Poland. 
Their ground troops, estimated at one million men, were advancing victoriously in the face of stubborn enemy resistance. The big bullies, why don't they pick on someone their own size? Polish cavalry is the best in the world, but you can't fight tanks with horses. Yeah, but just wait till England and France crack down on those goose steppers. They declared war all right. They don't seem to be doing much fighting. Well, who wants to fight? Well, who wants to go around with a big German foot on his neck? This ain't no world war number two. It's the same old war. The Kaiser was yelling for a place in the sun. And this crazy man, he's screaming for laboring. Well, it's the same thing, weasel talk. It's the same old bunch of gangsters and killers out to make slaves of the rest of Europe. This time they're liable to do it. Look what their bombers are doing to Warsaw. They'll have Poland washed up in a couple of weeks. What's going to keep them from doing the same thing to Paris and London? Yeah, what's going to stop that guy? Planes, among other things. The Canadian Flying Corps is asking for volunteers. Doesn't make any difference whether you've got any flying hours or not. How do you know? I checked up on it today. So did I. Good luck to you, boy. Good night, Mr. Wise. I suppose you've got a notion you'd like to go with them, eh, Rusty? Not exactly. No, I wouldn't make such a good pilot. Maybe I wouldn't even be much good with a gun. Never shot anything with a 22 with rats and tin cans. Yes, war is an unsettling business. Well, I'm going to hunch this one's going to go a lot further and last a lot longer than most people think. Makes a guy feel like he wants to get straightened around and... Well, head for somewhere. Still feel the same about college? I'll help. You want to go to IOU? Why should I go to the university? I don't want to be a doctor or lawyer or anything like that. Just be a waste of time and money. I, um... Guess I've been some help to you in the store, haven't I, Dad? Well, maybe. Little. Say, I'd have had to hire two extra clerks to do what you've done this past year. Okay. <clears throat> Look, Pop, if you can get along without me for a while, I'll go down to Des Moines to the School of Pharmacy and get busy and qualify for my license. If the war's over and the world's back to normal, then I'll be set to do some real good for the store. And myself, too. Say, we might even buy old Granville's building next door and spread out a little. The way you talked about doing something. And if the world isn't back to normal, then what? Well, I guess I'll be a lot more good to the Army or Navy or Marines or somebody as a skilled technician, even in pharmacy, than I will be as an unskilled recruit. What do you say, Dad? I say you better plan to go down to Des Moines. I felt awful good. Something like I did the first time I saw Agnes. Or way back the day I was made a corporal in the infantry. Of course, we missed him. It was the first time Rusty had ever been away from home. country losing it. The finest there is. We're pretty lucky. Maybe that's what Rusty's thinking. Or maybe he's just feeling a little puffed up coming home with all those good marks. He did all right down there. Worked hard. Yoo-hoo! Rusty! Why won't you 
want you at the station to meet me. Oh, I forgot all about it. Uh-huh, I bet you did. Didn't sleep a wink all night. Hmm, your ego is still holding up nicely, I see. Now, don't start smiling right off. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, no kiss. <laughs> Look, the kind of a welcome home I get. <laughs> Kind of droopy. Looks like Gober's been working on it. Pop, maybe you better not talk anymore to Mr. Granville about the building next door. Why, don't you think it'd be a good proposition? In ordinary times, yes. But these aren't ordinary times. No, I guess not. Not when you think of what's happening in Russia, places like that. Don't forget the Pacific. Why do you mention the Pacific? These old brown men with big teeth know like United States fellow. Oh, what's the use of waiting to be drafted? Maybe if everybody keeps on waiting, we'll find we've waited too long. Okay. What's it going to be, big boy? Army, Navy, or Marines? <laughs> you sound kind of resentful about the Marines. How come? Never mind. What's it going to be? Perhaps the Air Corps, hmm? Sure. Pharmacy ought to help me a lot there. No, Pop, I'll tell you. It's kind of silly, but... Well, I always did want to ride around on the ocean. Well, go ahead. Join the Navy and ride around on a lot of oceans. Yeah, I wonder if I'll get seasick. I don't know. I know I did in the last war, twice. Once going over and once going back. <laughs> Look real good in this uniform. Yes. Sailors' uniforms haven't changed as much since the Civil War as the Army has. Of course, I never saw many sailors. Not where I was, in the Third Iowa. Rusty! I uh, look real cute, don't I? Well, doesn't, doesn't this kind of get you? Yes. Okay. Right here. Well? Well? Yes. He was happy. Couldn't have been any happier if he lived to be a hundred. I used to stop here whenever I passed. Little weakness of mine. talk about Indians? I must have been thinking out loud. As long as American kids can join the Boy Scouts and do a good deed every day, eat ice cream, go to high school, play football, picnic in Briggs Woods, and take an honest saved dollar and 90 cents out of an old baby powder can... As long as they can do all those things, then what? 
It'll be worthwhile. What'll be worthwhile? The whole thing. A guy named Rusty. And a lot of guys like that. With a lot of names. Don't you think so, Lou? Rusty did lead a rich life. You're right about that. I'm glad you took him for a stroll around the town. And I know all the other things you're hoping I'll say. But I can't. He was my boy. Now he's... he's dead. I miss him. I can't help him. I'll always miss him. I'll always wish he was back. As long as I live. Of course you will, Lou. Back where we started from. Grant, it's kind of awkward with Agnes not able to see you, but if you want to stay and sit down to supper with us. You forget my peculiar situation, Luke. Anyway, I've got to be getting back. Why, Lou Marsh. Where on earth have you been? Oh, just... Just take a little stroll. But aren't you all tired out? You've been gone for three hours. Isn't that all? No, I'm not tired. I think it did me some good. I'm sure it did. Oh, you look better. Did you stop in at the store? No, I, I didn't. You wanted me to, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well... Maybe I'll go down tomorrow. Better get down tonight, Lou. What is it, dear? Uh, nothing. Uh, I was uh, just noticing the hedge. It looks a little ragged. Good evening, Mr. Marsh. Hello, Annie. Mr. Marsh. Why, it's nice to see you again. Thank you. How's that glamour soap going? Well, just fine. I thought it'd be a sticker. I see you're getting kind of low on bath salts. I just put it on the out list. I'll order some. I can assure you, Mr. Hibbs, they're exactly... I tell you, they ain't the right kind. And I don't want them. What seems to be the trouble, Jake? Hello, Lou. It's them pink bile pills. He's trying to make me take white ones. Well, Jake, we had to get those pills from a new farm. And I guess they just didn't like pink. Color was only a trademark anyhow. The ingredients are the same. All right, Lou. If you say so. So long, Lou. Kind of missed you around here. Hi, right, Jake. You can take the rest of the night off, Clayton. Uh, throw that in the wastebasket. Thanks, Mr. Marsh.
You, Ben? No, sir. Are you Mr. Marsh? Good evening. Yes, I'm Mr. Marsh. I'm Anton Kavrak. I'm Tony. I thought maybe Rusty had mentioned me in his so, letters. You're Tony? Yes, sir. Uh, what do you know? Sure, Rusty mentioned you in almost every letter. Mentioned Chicago. That's your home, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's such a home as I've got. I've been on my own since I was 16. Well, well. This looks kind of familiar. I don't know whether Rusty told you, but I used to jerk sodas in Chicago. You've got a nice fountain there, Mr. Marsh. Well, let's finish what you were doing. Here, hand them up to me. Is this stuff any good? No. Thanks a lot. Would you like a cigar? I wouldn't mind. a swell cigar. I don't very often smoke cigars, cigarettes usually. You know how it is. This is swell. Look, uh, are you bound for Chicago? When do you have to leave? Oh, no special time. You see, Mr. Marsh, it was like this. Rusty and I used to talk about, about what might happen. And see, I haven't got any folks or anything. But Rusty always said if anything happened... I mean, to him. He said I ought to come when I got a chance and call on you and his mother. You uh, came in on the 1013 from the West? Yes, sir. When you have to go back? Oh, I still got the better part of two weeks. Well, I guess I better call Rusty's mother and tell her we're coming. Yes, sir. is Rusty's mother, Tony. Mother, where are we going to put this big tramp for sailor? I guess you know. If he wants to. That's okay with me, Mrs. Marsh. I was just fixing a little lunch. Wouldn't you like some? Oh, that sounds good to me. Come on, Tony. Yeah, I'll take that.
You like veal loaf, don't you, Tony? You bet I do. I wonder, maybe we ought to discuss it now. Is there anything you feel you ought to tell us? Well, there really isn't very much to tell, Mr. Marsh. There never is. It all happened so quickly. We weren't surprised, but they had a lot more planes than us. And they kept coming over pretty fast. Rusty was down below in the sick bay. It was his job, you know. Something must have hit us below the waterline. An aerial torpedo, I guess. Last time I saw Rusty, he was coming up a ladder, carrying a fellow that had been hurt. Before he could get up, another torpedo hit us. I was blown into the water, so I didn't see anything else that happened. If Rusty hadn't been carrying somebody, he might have made the deck. I guess that's about all I can tell you. Except that I thought quite a bit of Rusty. Um, how would you like a little loganberry wine? There's a little old woman makes it. I guess I never had any Loganberry wine, but I bet it'd be swell. <laughs> 